the special M West that one of the name of Jesus in your African American get row becomes row 295. West that one of the name of Jesus. Screens here and here in the back. 
which will uh, you know, work with new dollars and all their alliance to go into that. So we'll take a while to do that, but that will give us greater access to the world and we'll continue to share our service and grow our service and grow our in person and virtual congregation. So that's very exciting. So I brought the Bob and Sister Jules is uh, something to know is, is she's here temporarily and so um and she's uh we're we'll gonna hear from her in a second when she's going to decide and, and tell about a miracle. Um but, uh, but as you know she's been temporary so we need everybody to folks in the city. Uh, uh the choir met a, a young person who's still uh, in the building who's been looking out but uh, we're gonna have a visit that's gonna go through the local part of the family when we come back but so things are happening in coming so you're going to see in the next month or so, especially as we enter the Advent season, some exciting things happening that are going to serve God and do the Son. So, uh, uh, first, I'd like to hear some testimony. You know, what's going on this week? What uh, What's happened special? Maybe we'll, we'll start with uh, the Sister Julie. So, right after, right after the service, right after the service, something happened. So, uh, Sister Julie, we can check. Good morning, everyone. I stand to praise and thank God for the miracle that he performed in my life in this church last Sunday morning at the service. People were coming up to express their condolences because, as you know, I lost my sister in Florida. That situation is still not settled. We don't know what the terms of the thing is. But whatever they do with the body, the cancer is still but as I was getting ready to go down the steps, you probably all have seen my cane. I used a cane for six weeks because the mobility in my left leg was just not there. I had two surgeries, I had both my hips replaced, and I started having problems about seven weeks ago. Went to the doctor, and he didn't have to tell me to start using the cane. I uh, got medication that I prayed and used the medication, but it didn't stop me from going anywhere I wanted to go or doing whatever I needed to do. Last Sunday morning, as I was leaving service, a couple of people were talking to me, expressing their condolences about the loss of my sister. And as I was getting ready to go down the steps, all of a sudden I said, Oh my goodness, there's no pain. Excited and new things going on. 
And um, one of the things I wanted to mention is that tomorrow is November 1st, which is All Saints Day. And we are not going to be having service tomorrow. So I think today is a good day for us to remember the saints that have passed in, in some form or fashion with tomorrow's All Saints Day. And um, I'd like to also uh, commend the leadership of this church. We are meeting, we are working hard in, in whatever area we are. We are working hard uh, for this ministry here at Dublin to grow it, to grow it. And that is the good seeds are being planted. We expect to. Um, bring some fruit and not in this future. Amen. 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 Am
the mothers and fathers in law who are struggling, who are suffering throughout the world, those who are older who are dealing with, with illness and Alzheimer's and, 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 and struggling physically. Please pray for the family of Denise Burgess who passed away in the police and, and console them and help them know that death is not the end but the beginning. Yeah. Please pray for, for Barbara's niece and, and others who are, who are struggling. Dear, dear God, we know that you have a plan. We know that we cannot, no matter what we do, change your plan. But help us understand that there's a reason for everything that happens and help us through prayer to be able to deal with those things that hurt us, to celebrate those things that make us happy, and to really lift up those who are, are struggling. Do you have any some prayer requests for Tammy Jenkins and family on the loss of, of, of her mother? This is Norris Bromley. May her soul rest in peace and, and comfort the family during this very difficult time. the family during this very difficult time. Please, please pray for John, who's mine, and Victoria, and Henry, Regina, Monique, Alan, Elise, Donna, Sean, Curtis Smith, Drano, Quadell Jackson, Patricia Gillespie, Kim, uh, at ShopRite. And, and so we thank you for, for, for allowing us to lift up those people. Help us to use our gifts to really console families and support those who are in need and in pain. We got to thank you and, and for the covenant family, and, and, and we're praying for the covenant family. Help us to continue to grow, and continue to support each other, and those who are here. Please pray for young people and help them find the spirit and catch the spirit and understand that Jesus is the only rock in their life. We got to thank you as we enter into service for all that you've given us for the beautiful day out and the beautiful people who are here and who are here. Help us to do all that we can to serve you. Your name is right. All right, as I said, um, uh, United Methodist Church number 393, the Spirit of the Living God. Thank you. 
created to God. We are people of God determined to love. We love neither from a sense of obligation nor to gain popularity or favor. Amen. Amen. It's always going to be the presence of God. Thank you. 
God, who made the heaven and earth, the sea and the universe, who keeps the their faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who dethrones the and hungry. The Lord sets the prisoner free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts, lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord loves, the Lord watches over the strangers who oppose the people of the way of the wicked who pray down to the Lord. The Lord will reign forever. Your God will sign for all generations.
the same that has been answered very well in the last few. Which commandment is the first one? Jesus answered them. The first is, Hear all Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. Then the scribes said, on, said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, and beside him there is no other. And to love him with all, all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, <coughs> and to love as oneself. This is much more important than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that and answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask any question. This is the word of God to the people of God. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. Amen.
life. So it's not so the first question that, that the book really talks about is what will be the center of my life? And the book explores the role of God in everybody's life. It really challenges you to really think about that. The second question is what will be the, the character of my life? You know, the Christian personality. What is my character? How do I live the word? How do I, how do I make a difference with, with people like that? The next one is what will be the contribution of my life? You know, what are we doing as a Christian church? How are we now doing it? How am I giving back? How am I using my gifts? The next question is what will be the communication of my life? And it's more their testimony of God's role in their life. How do I testify what his God has done for me? How do I share that with the world? How do I do a better job of thanking God for my testimony? And then the fifth and final question is what will be the community of God? It explores the Christian fellowship of life. How do we interact as a community, as a body of Christ, to come together to, to worship God and acknowledge Jesus Christ as our Savior? And so I love that because you know, obviously our, our writers want to be spirit. And so it got me thinking about what are the most significant challenges facing the Christian church today. And that challenge that I've talked about it before, that challenge is, is the people who are here are spiritual but not spiritual. I believe in God, but I don't have church. I believe in God, but I can do whatever I want. Amen. I believe in God, but I don't have to treat people well. So if we as, 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 as a world, as a world, is we can begin to think about how do we grow, how do we model the lives of the church so that they know that that's being spiritual but not religious is not enough. And they have to make Jesus our personal savior. They have to live a way that 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 demonstrates that Jesus is our personal savior. Every one of us sins, every one of us makes mistakes, every one of us falls off the wagon at one point in time. Amen. That, that's gonna happen. But it's important for us to begin to think about how do I come back to it? how do I come back to the church? How do I come together as, as a Christian? And so 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 one of the things that that I, I, I really find is that if we can talk about the Spirit in the life, we really can let the Holy Spirit be our God. We can talk to the Spirit on a daily basis. Then the answer is come to you. One of the things is, is I'm a certified executive coach, and, and I, I went to a, a expensive program and I'm certified, and, and I, I spent much of my career as a management consultant. So, I'm a consultant. What you do is you, you actually say, well, yeah, what should I do with my business? I say, well, this is what you should do. You know, you get that. But in coaching, it's very different. Most people talk. You don't tell people what to do. You really say, what are your interests? And the person feel like, I'm not scared of what your interests are. But people thank you more. They say, oh, yeah, that was wonderful. Because that had to ask us to power the question. But we as Christians didn't do that same thing. To coach our, you know, so often, especially for parents or, or relatives, and we want to say, don't do that. That's wrong. This is what happens. But instead, I think we need to really be more of a, of a coach and really say, well, what do the Holy Spirit want you to do? You know, how, how would the Holy Spirit, what would Jesus say? You know, and, and, and so I, I keep coming back to the Spirit and, and the Holy Spirit. And then if you look at John 16, 7 to 15, really talks about Jesus explains the power of the Holy Spirit. And so John 16, 7 to 15 says, Jesus says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate, the Holy Spirit will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to me in the world about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father where you can see me alone. And about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. He continues to say, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you yet what is to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. 
all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. So what this is saying is that Jesus is talking through the Holy Spirit and that he's yours. <clears throat> but I think, I think one of the one of the, the, the things that I found is that as Christians, one of the best things we can do is to figure out the voice. And, and I've said before that Saturday mornings are typically my day. I just put it up inspired to think. And typically when I finish the, the, the draft of the, of the sermon, and, and, and God kind of speaks to me as I lie in bed and, and begin to think about what am I going to do? God, what do you want me to do tomorrow? What do you want me to do with this next week? And, and so one of the things I, I like about this passage in, in modern terms is that, that, that Jesus is really saying the Holy Spirit is in many ways the, the cell phone that, that, that provides the right conversation to these guys. Holy Spirit is our cell phone. Now, it'd be interesting if people spend as much time thinking about Jesus than doing the cell phone. The world would be a much, much better place. But, but, but if we want to have this sustainable Christian happiness, you know, we have to listen to that cell phone. You know, but, but unfortunately, many of us, and those who are spiritual but not religious, have kind of turned off their cell phone. They, they, they basically are saying, you know, I, I'm turning on, off my, 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 my Jesus cell phone, and I'm turning off the world cell phone. That worldly cell phone is telling me to do things that I know aren't good. But I do it anyway. It's my defense so that I turned off the cell phone through the Holy, uh, from Jesus through the Holy Spirit. And we all do that. Every one of us does that. I'm not any better than anybody else. But it's important for us to understand that so often we are, as a body, embarrassed by our mistakes. Sometimes we're embarrassed by our mistakes because we don't want to talk about our mistakes. We don't talk about our mistakes. We make more mistakes. We start digging deeper and deeper. And then we're too embarrassed to ask about it. This is everything that all of us, all of us in this room. Not for anybody in, in, in particular, but it, it, it really is the way that, that, that we're called. And so, so I, I think there are a lot of books about the Bible and a lot of interpretations, but I don't know that they're not exercises. And that's what I like about the purpose with the Bible. So what I did is try to, to, to develop this thing, and I, I haven't I really finished the book, but I developed this 40 days of exercise, the spiritual utility. And, and, and so, um, you know, some people say, well, why well, my pastor did Rick Warren and pick 40 days? I can pick 40 days I can't pick them. So if you really look at the Bible, I think you get more credit for, for really doing this research. That, that, that 40 days is an exact period of time that can allow a person or community to connect with God for the Holy Spirit. So, so look at some of these significant events. So Noah experienced spiritual growth after 40 days of living. Moses experienced spiritual growth after 40 days on the outside of the Elijah experienced spiritual growth after traveling 40 days to war at the Mount of God gave the city of Nineveh 40 days to develop the spiritual growth they needed in the church. Jesus experienced spiritual growth by resisting temptation by the devil for 40 days. Jesus helped the disciples experience spiritual growth when he spent 40 days with them after he was away. So, so it, it's important to know that God is not saying that you'll only be transformed after 40 days. It's just simply a sufficient time for us to really develop a habit. You know, you know, I think some research says you know, 29 or more days is, is the time you need to, to, to take a, a, a habit. So, so, so one of the, the things, too many, you know, too many people, as I said in previous sermons, are, are, are worshiping money and, 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 and instead of, of turning on that, that cell phone. And so, so as we think about this campaign, uh, the idea is to have 30 days of, of thought provoking exercise. And so what I do is, that, and, and for each of the nine elements of the Spirit and, uh, and the Holy Spirit, um, the first day is on, on what I call influence awareness, which is really based on, on this book, so the first step. So influence awareness is really understand how I got an influence to experience love and joy and participation. What has been the influence in my life to get me to think about? The second is influence impact. What has that influence impacted me on how I behave? Because so often we don't acknowledge our influence. We think that we're self, we're self-made. So when you think about how we've been influenced. Who in my family convinced me that we're talking about love and joy and peace? And then, as I said, the second day is to understand what is the impact of what they've taught me? What are the 
challenges of the people who are here is that their influences really didn't necessarily influence them to understand the value of Christian community. So the role is for us to begin to influence other people who are here to really understand the power of community. So on the third day, we do what I call influence management, where we begin to really think about how do we bring prayer and, 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 and scripture reading and devotions into our life to really get us where God wants us to be in each one of those elements. And finally, influence maximization is about how do we influence others? How do we influence others to understand that? So the activities are based on the, the most famous scripture, John 3 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So as we begin to think about that, the, 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 uh, the fruit of love is really based on, on 1 Peter 8 to 9, which, which, which reads, You know you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy, for you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your soul. So as we think about our love in Jesus, we want to make sure that that love is in genuine love. It's so easy to have, uh, I believe in Jesus, because Jesus is the way we have. I can love Jesus. You have to love Jesus with your heart, soul, and mind. You have to feel Jesus. You have to love Jesus like you've never loved before. And the benefits that you get from that are, are, are indescribable. So, so, so the, 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 the next is you need to feel that joy. So, in that passage, you love him. But by loving him, you're filled with this inexpressible joy. We talked about the joy that implies human understanding, true happiness. And so sometimes when I talk, I, I talk to you about the, uh, the, 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 the media, Netflix, the TV, and they often portray Christians as, as being kind of crazy happy. They walk around as happy and happy and so on. But there's a genuine happiness that we have. The genuine happiness that no matter what happens to us, we know that Jesus is there. Right? We know that we will work through it, we will get through it, and one way or another, things are a lot easier. And again, we, many of you in this church have demonstrated that to me in amazing ways. No matter what happened, you still have the spirit and you catch the spirit. The next is the fruit of speech. And so I, I, I refer to John 14, 25 and 27. It says, All this I, I have spoken while still with you. The counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as an orphan. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Jesus is saying, I'm giving you peace if you accept. That peace is part of that happiness. That peace comes from, from us feeling content no matter what happens. And so often it's easy for us to, 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 to think about death as the end. But death is the beginning. God has a plan for us, and as we move on, it's important to think about that. So the next is, is patience. And so the, 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 the 1 Timothy 1, 15 to 16 says, the saying is true and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I receive mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience, making him, making me an example to those who would come to believe in him for eternal life. So Paul is an example of patience. And so often we pray to God is that. God help me tomorrow. And, and you know, one of the things I would say is that you want to make God laugh, make friends. Right? God has to. Sometimes by delaying what we want, better things happen. So as you think about this patience and this, this gift of patience, and the next is, is spiritual gentleness. So Philippians 4, chapter 4, 4 to 5 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I would say to him, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all the word is near. So as we interact with others, and I know I'm guilty of that sometimes I'm running around, I'm not as gentle as I need to be. You know, we need to be gentle with folks. We need to understand that, that people experience things in a way that's different than us. 
And sometimes, especially with family, you know, we're not as gentle as we as we as we need to be. You know, we're, we're in the midst of finishing the college application. Last night I was talking to my daughter, and I wasn't as gentle as I should because she wasn't doing what she needed to do. So I'm going to myself a little bit. She said, No, we can really say that. Then the next is spiritual goodness. And so Matthew chapter 12, 35 says, The good person brings good things out of the good stored up in him, and the evil person brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. Sometimes we are. And we are we are so anxious to be with popular people that, that those popular people um, bring evil things out. Amen. And they impact our good. Amen. So we need, to, we need to begin to try to resist. And if we don't walk away or give up on folks, we want to embrace them and help them. But we have to be honest to ourselves that, that many people are bringing evil to us. Yeah. Amen. They're evil to us because they're in pain. Some of bullying, but bullying in school. You know, the bullies are often in pain and they're bullying other people. So, so often, we, we, it's so easy to talk about people and, and, and criticize people, you know, but we need to really begin to understand that, that we've got to help people find the good and that everyone in God's children has to do it. So the next is spiritual faith, and then Proverbs 3, 3 says that love and faithfulness is ever with you. Bind them around your neck and write them on the tablet of your heart. Without faith, you don't have anything. And so often in this world, we, we become so, so focused on what is seen that we, we, we doubt faith. And I hear people say, I don't think I'm going to bite them. Jesus, I'm not seeing God. You know, I'm not talking about So we, as a body of Christ, have to help people understand and find faith and we find to believe what they don't see. So instead of seeing is believing. And so that's, that, that's critical. The next, and then the eighth section is on spiritual meekness, which is, which is based on Psalm 37 11. But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. We shall inherit the earth. That's not what we see on TV. Mm -hmm. yeah. Strong people, people with the bigger armies, the people that, that want to beat other people up, those are, those are the people yeah. that the earth. But Moses was a meek a, a man. He looked throughout the Bible, and so, so when we look at meekness, so what, what this says is you look at all this, is many of the things that we think are the right way are total opposites. That's why I love that meekness. Power of weakness, the power of humility is, is, is so important. And then finally, the ninth section is on spiritual self control. In Titus chapter 2, 11 and 13, it says, For the grace of God that brings salvation is appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age, while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ. So, so say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live in self-control. But we do things in moderation. Amen. And we begin to think and we begin to look at and it's why your thoughts are so important. We begin to look inside ourselves to know that we've gone across the globe. I, I'm one who says I, I don't have a problem with, with people who want to drink and so on, but you can drink excessively. You know, you can do things to excess. And so it's important for us to catch ourselves and say, I need to stop. Yeah, amen. I need to stop because I'm losing control. Amen. I'm, I'm turning off by Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Right? And so I need to stop and turn the cell phone back on. Amen. And finally, the tenth and the last four days are really about the Holy Spirit as a whole. We're going to talk about, about that. And so, um, so I, you know, for those that are interested, I'll share this with you. It's a word of promise. But I think we need to really begin. It's great to pray, it's great to read the Bible, but I think exercises to get us thinking. And as I said, Wednesday morning, the Wednesday morning Bible discussion is so, so important to me. It's not me preaching and telling you what you should do. It's really all of us coming up and saying, this is what this passage means to me. And those exercises, I don't think we do enough about in Christianity, so, so we, need to, we need to do that. And, and, and so, you know, society, 
right now is in the midst of a significant crisis of faith. You know, and I'm trying to do my part, and I want all of you to do your part to really understand that. You go out and talk to my friends, knowing that we're not perfect. You know, one of the things that we often think we have to do as Christians is tell you. I need to show them that as a Christian, I'm perfect. I do this right, I do this right, I do this right, I do this right. Something I'm concerned about, about that. But instead, we want to say, I need to the folks and say, I was broke. I came to church. Amen. And as I said, I said a couple of times that that uh, uh, the church is a hospital for sinners. Amen. But then uh, church is a hospital for people who come when they're broke. It's a place where people who come when they make mistakes. Amen. It's a place where people who come when they're not healing you. It's a place that that uh, uh, is, is, is 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 a place that will we build us up. My friends are here, so I'm going to say, Bienvenido, queridos, que bendiga esta mañana. So, uh, <laughs> hello, hello. I, I just want to say that to you. So, so again, in conclusion, I, I want to get you thinking about this, thinking about the exercise, and thinking about these elements of the spirit, and really thinking about that imagery of the cell phone. And we know when we've turned off the cell phone in our life from, the, from, from Jesus through the Holy Spirit, we just have to turn it back on. So as we try to grow the, the, the pews and, and get more people here, it's important for us to go out and say, you know, I was broken. Or, yeah. or, or some of the church was broken, and, and the church has really helped me to get my life back together. Yeah. And I love these things. I talked to a lot of you know, young people from our age, and our races, that people are scared to come here because of the church. Right. They, they, they're scared to come here and they think the church will put it back to me. No, no, that's my church is here. So, um, so again, I, I want you to get to think about that. But what we also do is try something out that, um, that I don't you know, I'm very active in, in education, of course, we've done before. And I find this thing called urban traumatic stress disorder. I studied neuroscience and found that, that mindfulness, they even sitting quietly and, and feeling your breath, actually changes the brain. And, and, and really changes the, you know, the, the, the amygdala gets out of whack. So, so many young people who are in gangs and other things, you know, are, are really scared. They throw pins on their head back or, or they, they bought drugs or something because the amygdala gets out of whack. They're, they're bad people. And so, but when you start to really look at these little signs, you realize, like, that's prayer. Prayer changes the brain. It's yeah. Yeah. Prayer by quiet and feeling the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Really change the brain. So one of the things I just I do in the morning is I I kind of lie down and, and I I uh, do what you do with my book of prayer instead. Uh, I don't know what you And actually, if you read the Greek, the original Greek in the Bible, the, the word used for Holy Spirit means breath. Yeah. It means wind. It means breath. So it really is the breath. It's the breath of God coming through it. So I'm going to ask you now to to uh, um, to close your eyes. And we're going to be right in prayer. And uh, uh, we'll start with that, and then, uh, and then I'll, I'll be right by the prayer. So, so please uh, uh, join in in, in prayer for your eyes. Let, let the Holy Spirit hover above you and, and come down through the top of your head. Feel that Holy Spirit coming through your brain and, and, and coming through your, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, your neck. Your shoulders, your stomach, your legs, your feet, your toes. Sit with the Holy Spirit for a second. Let us pray, dear God. We're grateful that you allowed us to awaken this morning and arrive safely in church. Please watch over all people in the world, but especially those people who are struggling to live. The spirit of the life of us to be. Please teach us that the only way for us to be the Christians that you call us to be is for us to exercise our mind, body, and spirit on a daily basis. Inspire us to take the time every day to develop a deeper connection with the Holy Spirit through each of the individual elements of the Holy Spirit. Help us to understand that if we do this, we can find a supernatural, sustainable happiness in our life that is stronger than any worldly problems. <coughs> we will make you yeah, I'm glad to see you.
And then our Wednesday Bible studies is also ongoing. Find some time, join, and learn from the Word of God. Amen. 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 Yes. Yeah, so ours is 7 a.m. and Pastor Kumar has uh, 7 p.m. So either way, if you're not a very morning person, you can join the evening session. Let's rise
except we have Jesus as our body. The God, we know that people are suffering and they're struggling and they're in hospitals and they've lost loved ones. Please help us minister to those folks in the way that you call us to and listen to the Holy Spirit to guide us with all that to heal everything that they're going to be bad. Help us to clear out the noise so that we can hear the Spirit guiding us and be that person that, that, that really serves God in a more intense and deeper way than we have had before. We thank you for the coming family and we thank you for the opportunities that we have to join you in serving the world and making the world the kind of place that it should be. In your name we pray. Amen.